you talked about being prepared earlier and you know for me it's always about connecting the dots because i do believe everything is divine and even as we bring this story back to you know you guys doing the podcast the drink champs podcast you already had your inroads to revolt yeah through coming home yep they know you they know your name it's not a hard sell you're doing business with them already right and so now you get drink champs off the ground you guys are going through cbs but you recently did this incredible deal. I don't even know if it had ever been done before. But nah, you it's podcasting now. Are distributed through three different channels, if I'm correct. This title, mass yep. appeal, and also revolt. Can right. we talk about that? In how did y'all even get three different huge distribution platforms to agree to a deal like that? Is the drink champs just that much in demand? I mean, I hope that that's the reason why, but uh, I just think that we were creative. Remember, I went back to telling you that I feel that audio podcasts, ha you know, you should never like negate that business model when you're doing a show. So if you're doing a visual show, it doesn't mean that you're no longer a podcaster. Take mm -hmm. your podcast game serious as well, because that's its own revenue stream. So because of knowing that and understanding that we could get creative in these business dealings. So we had a TV show. Uh, on Revolt, and we have an audio uh, podcast that can be distributed through somebody. And then you have Tidal, that's a subscription-based platform. Correct. So what that allows us, each one of those things is different, and it allowed us to do a deal where we bring all of them to the table together. And so because Tidal subscription, it, it's just subscription. They're, it's not ad share. Then Mass Appeal is doing a, an audio distribution that's ad revenue there. And then Revolt is doing TV and YouTube ad revenue there. And so it allowed us to do the, the, the triple deal, basically. Okay, you're, you're a pretty smart guy. Were you the architect? Because that's an incredible deal y'all did. Yeah, like, no, it was all of us. I, I, yeah, yeah, I couldn't take the credit. It, it, you know, no, listen, I could say all the stuff that I brought to the table, but of course, you know, none of this is happening without Nori. Absolutely. Without, Nori's genius without Nori, you know, Nori's the personality and the driving force behind everything. And he has amazing relationships that I wish I had. Um, between Nori, myself, and some management on the side as well that, that connect different things. We got Biggs in our corner, you know, Biggs from Rockefeller days. He's in our corner. Uh, Randy Acker's in our corner. You know, the team together is, is having these discussions. Um, but it, to me, it was clear early on that we could do a deal like this. Wow. Wow. Um, I should have asked you this earlier. Have you ever had a regular job? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> I, I passed out flyers for a pizza company when I was a kid and that's a, pretty much about it. And I've had businesses outside of music. I had a check cashing store at one point. And that's where I'm going because yeah. you, you're, you're a serial entrepreneur for real. <laughs> Like, like you, you have always found a way to make your own revenue. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, man. I mean, and, and I'll tell you, it's not easy. Like, can, can, you know, can, can we speak on that? Can we stop there for one second before I move this interview on? Mm -hmm. Right now, it's fashionable to be an entrepreneur. When you was right. coming up, when I was coming up, it wasn't. People didn't just aspire to be an entrepreneur. Right. People were taught, go to school, get a degree. Put your resume out there, get a job. We are the outliers of back in those days. Mm -hmm. Now everybody wants to be a boss. Can you just take a second and just drop a gem about what it really takes to be a boss? Because you just said it's not easy. It's difficult. It's difficult. It's investing. You have to complete, you have to constantly reinvest in whatever you're doing. And and me personally, I was always spreading out the reinvestment in different. I felt like Crazy Hood Productions is a tree bark. You know, it's, it's, the, it's the trunk of the tree and then there's the branches. And one branch might give all these leaves and the other branch might not. So that's the way I'm always investing. I'm putting, I'm spreading it out. But it all has to make sense with the tree trunk, if, if that analogy makes any sense. Yeah. Because a lot of times people will, will do all kinds of things, but they like go all over the place. You know, one day they're doing this and the next day something completely different that doesn't really fall in line with their original whatever, you know, and 
my whole thing is it all, all has to be relatable. It all has to complement each other. Correct. And, and that's what I've always set out to do. But it's it's tough, man. And and I think you you know you could probably speak to this as well. But remember the the when the housing market crashed and 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 the bubble burst and then the record label stopped doing the marketing you know those those funds dried up it got really really bad yes it did to be an entrepreneur at that time yes it did you know on a small level and you know it was a time where i was like am i gonna have to get a regular job you know is this what this is about to be we all lived through that moment e yeah so what but what you this is where all the discipline and where everything you know comes to 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 a head is that i just you know i said fuck it i'm just we're gonna have to go through this hardship and you know that's when you're just you're, you're eating out of, you know just tuna out the can and and you know you just and my whole thing was working smart not necessarily working I, i'm a big philosophy like my whole philosophy is working smart not working hard correct you know? but you work hard to get to the place where you can work smart if you know if that makes sense so yeah I, and i was gonna jump in and say that like, yeah. like, like, because there's so many people now, everybody wants to be a boss and they think that they know it all before they get into whatever discipline or whatever industry they get into. Understand something. Number one, we just went through your life chronologically. Right. You got a lot of years of experience. You started from the bottom. You started learning from the ground up. Right. That's where the work hard years come in. That's mm -hmm. where the lack of sleep, that's where all of the sacrifice takes place. Right. And then you get to another level where you can start to work smart because mm -hmm. you have a network. All exactly. of the things we've spoken about, you have experience. You, you, you now are able to see life through a different lens. You can pick up the phone and get your call through. All of these things allow you to work smart. But people right. like to skip that work hard thing. You right. know, everybody feels entitled. I'm a boss. I can just go out and incorporate and business should just be coming my way. It doesn't work like that. There is a long road to success. And again, how bad do you want it? And, it's, and, and I think what's important is learning the process from all different perspectives. And that's what I love about my journey and what I tried to do is I wanted to be in the streets doing street team stuff. I wanted to be in the studio recording with my artists and, and with other artists. I wanted to put out mixtapes because now every mixtape was like releasing an album. Yep. You know, that whole process. I had a store. Like, you know, I'm dealing with almost every element or every side of the industry that I could because I wanted to, if not learn it 100%, at least understand it. So that when it came to a point, I could use all this information and make it work for me and and that's what i've tried to do this whole time and and then going yeah going back to to when everything you know the housing crash and all that stuff i'm i'm at home and i'm like this is not going to stop me i just gotta change my style up like you know i'm not gonna be able to move the way i used to move and that's fine and, and you know and being humbled is is actually great it really is for your success you know it really and, is and it and it taught me about you know how important my relation i already knew about how important my relationships were but even more so like leaning on certain relationships and how to lean and, and, you know, and ask people for help and certain things. And, and, you know, like I said, I was just like, I would be at home on the computer emails with my website, with this, with that just till like four or five in the morning every day. And, and until, you know, slowly but surely we're crawling out of, you know, that situation and, and, and then boom. And then, you know, I'm doing, you know, a lot of other things and we we get out of it basically you you come out of it yep and you know so those are such great lessons that you have just brought to the table i'm so happy that you did this is not an easy road there's going to be so many bumps in the road there's going to be right. so many things that you did not anticipate nobody could have anticipated the housing crash yeah. uh you know 08, 09, 10, 11, like those were difficult years. And I'll never forget, and I'll move the interview on. You know, it was a good friend of mine who told me, and I'm such a competitor. And, you know, for me, I took it personal. I was like, how am I going to get this business to the other side of this recession? Right. And my man, he was like, you know something, Sean? This is, this is the test. Good mm -hmm. businessmen survive hard times. Are you a good businessman? 
And I never forget listening. I was like, yo, you like, I pride myself on being a good businessman. Let's see how good I really am. Because mm -hmm. I was seeing people close up shop. I was seeing people, you know, going and getting regular jobs. And, and just like you, I, 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 I had to have a certain discipline to make sure during those whole hard times, I was going to find the truth to myself. Was I a good businessman? Could I survive? And it's the important of, importance of building up your reputation because that's the currency that's going to get you through. I love that. I love that you said that. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.